to adapt and innovate in a time of scarcity is really another fancy way of just saying, I'm scrappy. When times are tough, the value of relationships become even more important than money. Take me for example. I got an MBA for free. My real life MBA comes from owning a small business and also running a lot of projects on almost no budget but lots of passion and also learning the art of knowing how to give and how to get. My studies began in 2008 when I returned to Seattle to help my family with our Vietnamese language, Vietnamese language newspaper. It was a tough time for the news industry and Seattle was about to say goodbye to one of its two dailies. At my newspaper, our readers were ever growing but our budgets were ever shrinking. We had to cut our staff hours, slim down our newspaper. I was slaving away at the office, and we were just in survival mode until I had this epiphany when I went to a Greater Seattle Chamber of Commerce event, and I heard a speaker quote from the e-myth, small business owners spend a lot of time working in their business, but they need to spend more time working on their business. And that's when it hit me. I need to spend more time expanding my networks and doing some old-fashioned relationship building. See. In ethnic media, a lot of people are like my parents. They have a passion for serving their communities, but they tend to stick with their own. They don't break outside their, their um, ethnic groups. But I knew that to advertisers, I was just this single, lone Vietnamese language newspaper. And to actually get anywhere, to make an impact, I would have to show the value of reaching out to diverse communities in general. And so that's when I started to think about partnering with other ethnic media organizations that were struggling, like my own. And that's when I came up with CBs, a hive for hypo-local ethnic news. I knew that together we, would, we could be stronger than the sum of our parts. And so we brought together Ethiopians, Russians, Hispanics, um, Chinese, lots of people. And I wrote a grant proposal for a capacity building program that focused on business education for ethnic media. I submitted it to the Gates Foundation and I got a big Fat, no. <laughs> it was, that rejection was probably the best thing that could have happened to me, though, because it forced me to think about other funding sources, such as the City of Seattle's Department of Neighborhoods Matching Grant, which requires you to have in-kind donations from the community, such as volunteer hours. It really pushed me to think about how I could leverage my relationships and resources. So with the City of Seattle as my angel investor, I went out and I sought other investors. Now, times are scarce, money is hard to come by, but I knew that if I could find community partners and get them to give whatever they could, then we could actually make this work. So I like to think of resources in terms of the three T's, time, treasure, talent. Everyone has a T they can give, and the T that you may give will change throughout your life. The art of knowing how to give and how to get is understanding that you never ask people for something that they are not capable of giving. Also, what's important to creating sustainable relationships is understanding that everyone wants something. It's okay to want something. And what you need to do is put all your cards on the table and like, just talk about it so that we together can help each other fulfill our individual and mutual goals. To give is to give generously, but to give within your means and to be genuine about it. For a lot of CB's members, they didn't have treasure to give, but they had a lot of talent. They had their networks. They had their community to share with people. And to get is to accept the gift graciously and to share with the giver what that contribution will do and also to try to give the giver, some, to give the gift giver something back. So you can see that to give and to get, they don't look that different, right? It's because to give and to get is a cycle. To give, you gotta get. To get, you gotta give. Based on that principle, CBs was able to organize 14 events in 11 months on $30,000. And we were also able to raise the visibility and respect of our industry and also the communities that we serve. So for example, by coming together in the arena of politics during campaign season, we really pushed political candidates to start addressing the needs of minority and ethnic voters. And we also pushed them to think about investing and reaching out to our communities in the same way that they do with campaign advertising and mainstream press. So we organized a, a candidate's meet and greet, which attracted 17 different candidates from all over, and Bill Gates Sr., that's him, came over down to um, debate the state income tax. We basically asked political politicians to put their money where their mouth is. With all these newsmakers, government agencies, nonprofits, for profits coming together, giving whatever they could to strengthen our community forums, we realized that working together, we were just no longer alone. Last summer, I graduated from business school. And I, I like to think I graduated with honors because I was named to the 40 under 40 list. And that's quite a feat for someone who comes from a small, family-owned, Vietnamese language newspaper based in the Rainier Valley 
And I like to think that I was selected because, well, I'm scrappy. Yeah. <laughs>